today we're going to be talking about my four favorite things in the world, TypeScript, GraphQL, code generation. No, we, we uh, so a little bit about me. <laughs> I'm the founder of a company called Double Dates. I've been a professional developer since 2006, an aspiring game developer since 2003. I've angel fire sites that are still alive from 1998. Huge fan of React Native and TypeScript. Uh, I've been using it since its inception, and uh, I rarely work on non-TypeScript projects these days. <laughs> uh, so what is TypeScript, right? Basically, it's JavaScript with some extra colons that make your code more sane. It's a static typing system baked on top of JavaScript uh, that allows you to stay up to date with the most latest features of uh, JavaScript, most recently things like uh, optional chaining and null coalescing. Uh, it's a Microsoft product, came out in 2012, and by all metric, it's taken the world by storm. So uh, what is GraphQL? It's a query language for your API, right? But it's so much more than that. It's adding structure to your API layer by removing the need to have your client make assumptions about what your server can do. Uh, today, we're primarily going to be talking about the Apollo uh, server client implementation because it does some extra cool things that allow uh, us for making your code a lot easier. Uh, so what is code generation? It's the act of using a tool smarter than you to, use, uh, to do things you would have done anyway but don't actually want to have to do. Uh, <laughs> I like to use code generation as much as possible, especially for TypeScript, um, especially when it comes to type definitions. I try to extract as much value as I can from the code I've already written so I don't have to write it again. Uh, all right, let's take a look at some GraphQL. Here we have some GraphQL. We have a query, uh, which is essentially GraphQL's version of a REST get. Uh, this query is named getShoe. It takes a single parameter that is and can only ever be a string. String is a scalar type defined by the GraphQL engine for us. Uh, the query returns a type that we have defined below named shoe, which we described to have exactly two fields. You can see it looks like JavaScript, but clearly it's not JavaScript. We can also have mutations, which is more like a post, put, and delete. Here we have our reduce shoe smell mutation, which takes exactly two parameters. It will presumably mutate some database entity or something like that, and then return out an object that looks like our shoe type defined above. These queries and mutations is how your client will communicate with your server. You can find as many or as few queries and mutations as you'd like. Uh, so now we have our GraphQL schema. Uh, we have to tell our node server how to get this data, right? We do that with what Apollo calls resolvers. We define a resolver for each query and mutation in our schema, which is the entry point for our API to begin querying and mutating our database as needed. This is a one-to-one -one mapping from the schema that we defined earlier. So let's take a deeper dive here. Um, we have a callback with our get shoe query and reduce shoe smell mutation. Uh, we make a database call to find shoe by ID and save shoe uh, as needed, and then return on an object that matches the schema we would define earlier in our GraphQL. The problem is nothing here is safe. We can botch just about anything, we won't really know there's an issue until runtime. So I know what everyone's thinking, right? TypeScript. Of course. Let's type this baby up. Let's keep typing types until our fingers are bloody. Let's type some more types, more than anyone's ever typed. Let's not stop typing until the sprint is over, and then let's type even more types. Let's put those Java developers to shame with just how many types we intend to type. Let's keep typing. I'm just waiting for the time to run out. Uh, 100 years, TypeScript. Ty OK, so uh, <laughs> the main problem with this is to cover all your bases and still get all the magic that GraphQL provides you, you're going to be typing your types until the project manager realizes you haven't delivered a single feature since last sprint and force you to deploy on a Friday. Um, GraphQL's resolver capabilities are wide and varied, uh, and there's a lot to support, and it's a very complicated thing to get right. Enter our good friends at GraphQL Code Generator. These fine folks have created a series of packages that allow you to auto-magically pump out the types for your GraphQL schema to both your server and your client. Uh, they have provided these command line tools you can run in the background, which allow you to write your code as safely as possible with no need for escape patches, unsafe code, or the dreaded any. Uh, all you need to do is provide a simple YAML file. You point it to your schema and define a series of generators to pump out your code. They provide you a, num a number of these uh, generators for you. For my project, I'm using it to generate my resolvers and my operations, my schema definition, my front-end binding code, and then copy my schema from my server to my client so that my client IDE is a little bit happier about what's going on. Now all you have to do is tell my resolver variable that it is in fact of type resolvers. And look at that. My friendly neighborhood IDE told me that sure enough, during one of my midnight coding sessions, I tried to use an argument that was not defined in my schema. TypeScript told me this in real time because it had already scrubbed my GraphQL for the latest changes. This will also validate the return type of the function to make sure that it matches my schema. Uh, so now let's look at the client side, right? So here's my React app. I now have my client GraphQL where I'm going to define a new query. When I invoke this, I want to call the server side query named get shoe and grab two fields off of the shoe type that was returned. The magic of GraphQL is I can define as many or as few of these parameters as I'd like, uh, and no more than what's needed will ever be sent over the wire. 
Same problem as before. Uh, again, I, to make this call uh, client side, it won't safely take my parameters or safely return my results. I have to be assured that my midnight uncaffeinated brain typed out everything correctly. If I want to make it safe again, I'm going to have to do a lot of typing and a lot of code manually to keep up to date as my server team makes changes behind my back and with no regard for my deadlines. <laughs> or we can use the automatically generated get good shoe component that takes my uh, uh, ID safely um, and returns my data safely as uh, the data type. It's doing this using the render prop pattern, but it also has support for hooks. Uh, it provides me with these helper fields as well, like loading and error, that display my information appropriately uh, to the client. And I can switch on them as I need to. The same thing works for mutations. Uh, it provides me with a function that I can invoke with the required optional parameter and returns out a promise. I can either await on this promise or I can simply key on the loading field as needed. Once the promise has resolved, the data field will be populated appropriately and I can display my results to the user. Okay, I know this was a lot to cover in a lightning talk. Uh, I threw a lot at everyone, uh, there's a lot of information, tremendous amount of things I glossed over here. Things like resolvers, being able to grab arbitrary fields off of your uh, query object that are not on the main object that are also completely type safe. Uh, or uh, Apollo client aggressively caching what's happening for a lot of additional free magic. But I feel like this is a good entry point to letting you know what's available to you uh, if you choose to use GraphQL and TypeScript. So thanks. I want to thank everyone for coming to my lightning talk. I want to thank the, GraphQ uh, the React conference team. And I hope in the future when you use GraphQL and TypeScript, the majority of your code is generated. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.